Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. This is section 711, example two. So we have two long cylinders. Um, we're going to take a cross section of length L. That's the outside cylinder. There's the inside cylinder. Okay. And um, they have uh, varying radiuses. The radius of the inside one is A, and the, the radius of the outside one is B. Okay. And we're going to put a potential difference between the two. So let me just. There's a potential difference between the two. How that's done, the book doesn't say. I assume that you're going to um, have to have some kind of wire or something running inside of the uh, uh, insulated wire running inside there to connect the two. Um, or you're just dealing with the infinite exaggeration of some finite length pole. So um, let's calculate the field on the inside. Uh, let's take a simple Gaussian surface. We might as well just take the whole thing, but um, let's just take the whole thing. So let's take a Gaussian surface that looks like this. Okay. And so there's no horizontal component to electric field because we're dealing infinitely here. So we can calculate the electric field is going to point in the r hat direction. And it's going to be the charge contained, 1 over epsilon naught. The charge contained, that's lambda L. Lambda is the charge density per unit length. Um, divided by the area, the wraparound area. So that's going to be 2 pi RL. And obviously the L's cancel, so you just get this nice little equation in the R hat direction. Okay? Now let's calculate the current from the inside to the outside. Uh, we know what the current density is going to be. That's just J equals sigma epsilon, or uh, E. So the current density is going to be the integral across a similar surface of the J vector dot the area component there. Um, J is going to point in the same direction as E. It's going to have magnitude sigma dot dA. That's just sigma times the integral E vector dot dA. And we've actually already solved it with Gauss's law here. This is just the charge enclosed. This is sigma over epsilon naught. Uh, lambda times the length. Okay, so that's this is we use Gauss's law to calculate this. We use Gauss's law to bypass that integral there. Isn't that neat? We don't have to solve integrals when we can use Gauss's law. Um, now we're going to calculate the potential difference between the two. So v is equal to negative the integral. Let's think here. So we're going to start at b and walk to a, and we're going to calculate the e vector dot the path that we take. Uh, let's flip the signs. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, the E vector is given up here, so it's 1 over epsilon naught. This is all constant. Lambda over 2 pi, and then integral from V to A of 1 over R. And it's in the R hat direction, dot the DL. Well, DL is just, we're just walking, uh, you know, our D, DR, R hat. So we get uh, that right there for the dot product of this and the DL. Well, what does that equal? Well, that's rather easy to solve. That's just 1 over epsilon naught. Uh, 2 pi, I'm at last up, lambda over 2 pi. Um, this is going to be log of b minus log of a, and we can just rewrite that as a fraction of log of b over a. Okay, the last step is we have to, we have to relate v to i. Okay, so the current is going to be this. Well, we have a lambda here, so let's solve for lambda. So it's going to be sigma over epsilon naught, um, lambda, which is, there's going to be a v at the end. We're going to have 2 pi on the top. We're going to have epsilon on the top. We're going to have log of v over a on the bottom. And then we have, um, that's all of it. And we have a v, and we have an l. The l comes from right here. So these epsilon, epsilon naughts cancel. And so we end up, oh, where'd my sigma go? There it is. 2 pi sigma L over log of B over A V. There's your solution of how the current relates to the potential difference between the two sections there. Hope you had fun. Thanks for your time. Bye.